up here on this fourth floor, you can see in the center is a swirling mass of wind, barely visible, but definitely audible. As you walk along this thinner balcony, you can see lots of fountains and, like, aqueducts running along the walls. The scaled appearance of this place is even more obvious up here. As you can see, numerous Yanti hieroglyphs that Icarath would be able to discern are talking about uh, the ancient people who used to live here and how powerful they were with magic ruling over this desert land and bringing water and life to it. And of course, how amazing and wonderful that was. Yay, woo. I get the feeling that these guys weren't nearly as good as they think they were. Now, come on. They're pretty cool. I mean, they wrote all this themselves, assumably. And if you write this about yourself, like... Biases are biases. Or perhaps it's the truth. Hmm. Mm. Well, maybe the truth is they saw it. Everybody has truths. As you walk up to the next level, the party would find themselves dealing with Roll20's fucking UI. God, this thing, <laughs> it hates Firefox, I swear. It actually does. You find yourselves standing almost immediately next to the staircase up. However... <laughs> All along the edges here, you can see more hieroglyphs, more aqueducts, more fountains, more ancient, ancient runes. This looks bizarre. So strange. Because not, and then like all of you starting to realize, not once have you actually seen a support pillar, except in the very center. Only four large pillars seem to be supporting this place. Everything else is either torches or glowing lines or more and more hieroglyphs on the walls. Hey, guys, you know how we have all these hieroglyphs all over the place? What if they're at not hieroglyphs, but runic magic keeping this thing entire place in, in position? I mean, I'm not a master of magic, but I'm pretty sure that battery was pretty damn big for just for filling some water and food. Yeah. yeah, but what if it's not just that, but the entirety of this structure having every single piece of it being magical in the form, in the way of basically keeping it all connected together? Mm hmm. From what I can read, these hieroglyphs simply tell more stories. They don't seem to... They wouldn't really create a spell. But... You don't know about that. Some spells are magic. Or are just stories and within magic. I mean, it could just be elementals. You guys that hear that too, right? That wind going? It could be that. Wind? This whole place could just be one giant earth elemental. That is not a pleasant thought. <laughs> no, it is not. As Sorak will head to the uh, next floor. If he could. And so, Hawk, we can see down to the first level, right? You can. Ooh. Okay. 
Yeah, that little ring in the center there, that is the first floor. Okay. I'd be lying if I didn't say it was, that's a bit nerve-wracking. Well, uh, I actually have an idea here, guys. It's a dumb idea. So the only thing in the middle there, apparently there's a few air element. Easy, right? And Bigglesby can fly. We could get ahead of them. Well, by we use... Yeah, if we could do some aerial combat. The only thing in our way is a few elementals. Are you sure about that? As the party looks out from this balcony, especially considering what Amo is about to suggest, the party looks out and looks up, only to have their breath taken away as they see a gigantic, massive, spiky crystal shimmering with pale light far above them, like like a, like a couple floors up. We're definitely not going up there. I'm going to scan the nine, the uh, seventh floor. Can I see Azura and her people with my eyes of the eagle? You can see way over here is a shimmer of some kind, which you would recognize by this point as the telltale sign of an illusion spell. Well, there's something fucky going on over there. Not... Yeah, let's just go over and check it out. I don't want to risk shooting an arrow and hitting and pissing off elementals on accident. Yeah, Sorak is just immediately moving. Uh, it's some sort of illusion to be to specify what sort of fucky it is. As you approach, looking in through this doorway, you see the illusions shimmer out and disappear, revealing a good few members of Azura's crew all just kind of like recovering and nursing wounds. Where's Azura? They're upstairs. She just left you here? They're the only one left. They went up there to get the piece of eight alone. Oh, God damn it! Well, seems clear what we need to do. We're moving there now. Yep. Uh, if you guys like want like swap signs join our crew like pretty sure it's like a semi-open invitation right captain options there yes but i am not demanding them to join us oh no I'm, that's what i'm saying like you know we wouldn't leave you behind like this anyways time to go kick your boss's ass or talk her down or talk them down one of the two. I'm glad y'all are catching that now. As Sorok just immediately starts heading up. Uh, how? Uh. <laughs> ah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this ain't the staircase going up. That's a staircase. That's from a. Yeah. Uh, how far down is that stairs? About 15 feet. Yeah, you know what? Fuck, I could jump that. Wait. It was be able to airlift you down. Smart. Yes. We're not twice. losing half your health to a nat 1 on something that could be avoided. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. I will just use the shield wings and float. 
get down there and Sorok is now booking it. All right. And mind you, uh... I'm not only using my bonus action to dash and my main action to dash, but actually, no, yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh. Airlift anyone who needs it. <laughs> I, I I just gotta say. Alright. Speed. I'd say this, I like this map a lot. This is a I, really, really cool map. Yeah, like, it's kind of tricky to, like, tell which stairs go which, but... Yeah. I uh, like it. The artist for this map is Gabriel Pickard on Roll20. Uh, they do some fucking amazing work like this on a regular basis. It's like... It's have... fucking beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Hopefully Azura is not fuck fucking dead or screwed over yet. Okay. Well, I checked the room. I mean, yeah, there's there's nothing in this room worth checking. Okay. As you okay. reach up into the, you run up the final staircase, coming around as you uh. Actually, you know what? Let me go back here. Sorok and Ikarath, as you run through those doorways, you find yourselves outside. The That's storm a... is massive. And from up here, you finally get a glimpse of just how freaking huge it really is. The storm covers miles of land swirling storming it's ba just almost beyond your comprehension and a good just... time that that is just like the kind of stuff that Sorok tries to ignore <laughs> cuz like Crap, I'm already having an existential crisis of my own identity. I don't need to go and frickin' wonder how the fuck scientifically this happened. And you know what? I'm in a world with magic, so he's like, you know what? It's magic. I'm not gonna question it. Fair. As you continue rushing up these stairs, uh, the party following suit, I presume... I mean, I'm going to take at least a good 20-second long look at that. Because that's like nothing I've never seen before. But yes, I'll follow suit. And as the party rushes up the staircase, they find themselves on a small balcony that leads in through a small hallway. And when they come out, You find yourselves on a large, closed, golden, central chamber. Sand is swirling gently in here. Not like the sandstorm outside, but enough that it catches your attention. Okay. I look for footprints. None of you are going to get the chance. As all of the sand seems to recognize that you're here, and all of it swirls together, coalescing into a huge form. Oh dear. A massive sand elemental looms over you. Countless smaller dust elementals starting to swarm out from the other rooms nearby. Thank <laughs> you. 
now it's time everyone roll initiative oh boy this is gonna hurt accurate I at least hope I rolled higher than the than the elementals. Numerous other elementals come down. An air elemental comes down, its body coalescing into vicious shards of hardened air. Another one, another earth elemental emerges, its body hardening and stiffening into stone-like armor. And of course, the normal elementals emerge as well. So now, this is going to be a fight. Okay. Hey, Mo. Have Beggles be charge up at the, the biggest one. Uh, and I will so have Beggles be hold back so they can use their big spells real quick and not hurt us. Smart. But yes, <laughs> after so that though, your plan. Is... Sorok would actually look around to see if there's any like ropes or anything that or hanging from the ceiling. No. Uh, the ceiling here is a massive dome that seems to be comprised of some kind of thin mesh. So, completely empty. Yep. Oh, that's lovely. Well, no tricky bullshit here. Oh, Icarus. Uh, wait, I'm the highest? Yeah, you are. Go. Oh, shit. Uh, well, as I was going to say, he's going to or order each of the players to do something. So, Shinzo, you do what you usually do best, which is murder everything that you see. At least murder everything aye, that's aye, Captain. possible. Icarus, fireball. Helica, or me. Charlotte, Fireball, Helica, Rage and destroy the two Earth Elementals to your side, on your side, along with your partner there. Amo, as stated, hold Beagles be back to let Icarath and Charlotte do their thing, but once they're done, have uh, Beagles be charge up. Understood. As Sorok. <clears throat> Bonus action to get to here. Stabs at this guy. Gotcha. Need the other book. I have like three books open right now with all of these monsters. Oh, God. Oh, shit. I actually hit. Yeah, I you think. did. You did. Woo! 27 damage. 27 damage. All right. And that is magical, so, yep. Actually, is that going to... Yes, it is. All right. All right, Shinzo, go on. He is going to run right up to this one. He has advantage now. Yep. Yeah, he'll he'll still be using the soul movement. So I was thinking about swapping him for blood bottle. But... All of those are going to hit. As Shinzo turns into a flurry of blades, slicing and dicing. Eleven. And double wounded. Eleven. Forty-one. Alright, 
You have sliced and diced to this armored air elemental. Amo, it is your turn. I'm going to spend two charges to Hunter's Mark, this small one behind me and Bigglesby. And then Bigglesby is going to try to eat it. As you do. That'll hit. That, oh, that'll super miss. <laughs> and those other two will hit as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Hunter's Mark onto the big guy. As I use my movement. Begin it here. And Bigel's B will not do. He'll, he'll do a little dance. Gotcha. Make a little love. Get down tonight. Ah. All right. Icarath. I see you pre measuring. <laughs> yeah, you know what's happening. I do. Uh, so, it's going to be this spot right here. Ikarath <laughs> is going to get that nice little familiar green glow in his fingertips and just kind of flick it off there to cast a fireball. Okay, well, that's going to hurt. Roll your damage, my boy. As the explosion happens. Actually, the air elementals might live through this. Oh, it's somewhat weak. No, that's not. He's, he's not going to live through that. Never mind. <laughs> Gwen, please. Sorry. All right. The massive desert elemental in the center is completely unfazed by the fireball. The heat and explosion slam through it, and it just folds in on itself and reforms just as quickly. Miss Chantel, it is your turn. Hmm. She looks at everything, and she turns to Igarath. Do you perhaps have something more cold? I think I got something first. She nods. Because I think we could make a beautiful glass sculpture. And she just breathes in, sucking in all her breath, and then begins to blow as a huge cloud begins to form within the sand. And she will cast an ice storm. Oh, shit. Alright. Ice storm, a 20 foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder. Oh my god. Oh boy, this guy, that's gotta suck. <laughs> Don't tell me. The sand elemental is weak to cold. About that big, I think. Yeah, about that big. Yeah. All right. Do you want to hit the? Wait a minute. That's one, two, three. This, the fact that this isn't centerable is really annoying me. You can hold shift in order for it to be centered. When you're making this shape. Eight, eight. There we go. Okay. Alright, so... You're going to be hitting all of them with this. So let's see. 2d8 bludgeoning damage... 46 cold damage, and they have to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh boy. Alright, I don't think the the earth elementals can't make that. The, the 
desert elemental actually could make that quite easily. Are you sure about that? Nope, never mind. Alright, so the earth elemental is going to take a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. The earth myrmidon is going to take the same amount. Air Elemental takes the same amount. Ouch. This Sorry. guy is actually not going to take that much. All right. Helica. Which one did Sorok water Helica attack? The Earth uh, yeah. So, whatever you want to hit. Really. Basically. I'll do this one to be ordered. Um, I'll go here and just pop um, the rage thing. Do that. And I attack. That doesn't hit. Nope. But you bounce but off with stony, stony in exterior. Yeah. Madama V, however, no. runs up and slices down on it. That's yeah, actually, I think that's actually going to get to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's got way more health. Hmm. All, right. All right. And. It is now their turn. Ha, who's ready to die? Uh, definitely not me. As all of the miniature dust elementals start swirling out, trying to get into position to start fighting and biting and scratching with their sandy little claws. None of them actually do anything. The air elemental comes up and swings its mighty air fist down at Sorok. Okay. That'll hit. Ow. That second one will miss. At least it's one. So its first punch smacks you across the face, dealing 15 damage. Ow. Oh god. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> The Earth Elemental starts trying to swing at Helica. Both of its attacks will hit. Dealing a grand total of 15 damage to her, because Rage is really good at protecting. Okay. She has... Okay. Nice. Oh no, you're right. <laughs> All right. This big boy stomps up and pulls up its arm, which forms into a massive maul that it swings down at Helica. Oh jeez. Oh, it doesn't actually feel as much. which is going to deal a total of 10 more damage to her. Right. And those, those elementals and the air myrmidon. It lashes out its hand, which turns into a long chain-like flail of concentrated crystallized air. But it snaps at Shinzo. Three times in a row. And not a one of them hits because Shinzo doesn't give a fuck. And finally, the Dust Elemental. The 
dust elemental looks at Icarath, uh, Chantel, and Bigglesby. It rears back, lifting up an arm, which coalesces like a miniature sandstorm into a ball of dust that he throws at them. And I will need Icarath, Amo, Bigglesby, and Chantel to make me a dexterity saving throw, please. Bigglesby makes it with advantage. Go for it. Ooh, I do not make it. <clears throat> right. uh, did Amo need to make it as well? Amo needs to make it as well. As the sand suddenly explodes and into a small storm, tearing into your skins. Uh, I would like to use inspiration to not die here. <laughs> oh, don't worry, buddy. You'll be fine. It's only 11 damage. Uh, Bigglesby will take six. Take 11. Graph takes 11. Amo takes 11. Alright. Okay. Don't forget the uh, 2d full damage to this one from being wounded. Oh, that's right. Go ahead. Go ahead and roll that for me, please. As I. So you do notice that as as you're recovering from this blast of sand, it raises its other arm, doing the same thing again. Oh hell no! I will need the four of you to make me the exact same saves, please. Wow. No, God, please, no, no, no. Oh. I was hoping for all of you to succeed. Yeah. <laughs> Chantel will take another 11 from the massive sand blast. The rest okay. of you will take, the rest of you will only take six. All right. Then it turns and looks towards Bigglesby and Amo. It's as both of its sandy throwing arms sink down, from its shoulders two more sprout, and they both aim at Bigglesby, spinning into vortexes that launch into sand-like spears at the giant bee. The first, Bigglesby manages to block with his massive claws. The second one, however, pierces into his skin, dealing 10 damage. With that, we come back round to the captain. I have a really dumb plan. Good. Do it. Bonus action, disengage for a stop. Okay. Charge at the stand monster. Okay. And what my character's gonna do is actually try to jump into it and start swinging wildly. Okay. Go ahead. And well, I fucking missed. Yeah, you missed. But acrobatics to jump in? No, you don't have to. It let you jump in. Oh shit. Uh, Not what I was expecting, but okay. 
Uh, yeah, indeed. Oh, shit. All right, Shinzo, your turn. Okay, uh, now noticing that he's kind of surrounded and this one's already been wounded, he's going to turn his attention to these two. Yep. Oh, guys, uh, he's going to swing twice on this guy and twice on this guy. You got it. All right. So, dead and dead. Continue. Okay. Well, sh yeah, that's yeah, it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to use action souls just yet. I want to kind of save that for big fuck down there. But... Got it. All right, Amo. It's time. So, yeah, Bigglesby is very, very not happy with this pile of sand that thinks that it it, it thinks it's like a sand castle or something. So I'm just going to pat him on the butt and uh, tell him to stick him. And so it was the charges in and uh, starts a fighting. All right, go for it. An advantage. Yeah. Yeah. That's two crits. I assume they all hit. They all hit. Yeah. Okay. All those. Yeah. All those do plus two damage, and the hunters mark for each. Forty-five damage. Jesus Christ. And then Almo just just kind of backs up. <laughs> hey, Icarath, it's your turn, buddy. So Icarath is actually quite surprised to have been hurt because most of most combats he actually has not been hurt yet. So. <laughs> He's also pretty pissed off, and he's just gonna look over at Chantel and say, You said real cold, correct? Yes. Chilling. Alright. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this point right here. Mm -hmm. I can cast uh, Hunger of Hadar. Hadar. Hunger of Hadar. Hadar. Go ahead and hit that spell up. It's actually just a... Basically, anybody starts within that 20-foot radius here. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it so that it's basically just the bottom. It, it should hit the... Um... Oh. Full magical darkness. Basically, it, it should avoid teleport. Gotcha. There we go. Yeah. This guy. Oh, it's four. You get the. Yeah. Go ahead and roll the cold damage for it. Let's see how much they will take on their turn. Miss Chantel. Don't you also get acid damage? At the end of their turn. Yeah, they stay in that radius. Oh, she gets impressed and she looks back at Icarus and is like, Why haven't you ever pulled something like that earlier? Most of the time the fireball takes care of it, to be honest. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> and she laughs. Hmm. She's going to... Oh, let's see. Uh... Ooh, I, I, I think I have an idea. She's going to cast a hex. 
on the big sand and you see her muttering words otherworldly infernal in fact as horns begin to protrude from her head and her lips spew out blood and it just pours down to her dress and then a thin line just drizzles through the sand and connects right into this creature all right Go ahead and link that hex, please. And as she does so, she begins to pull and conjure even more energy from her hands as her eyes roll black. And it turns darker and darker. And she shoots two Eldritch Blasts. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, the first one will hit as it slams into the creature. And don't forget the extra necrotic damage. The massive sand elemental shrieks and writhes as the dark magic starts to overtake it. Maybe my turn. Miss Helica, it is your turn. Your time has come. So go to. Um, so I have a dominate coming at the follow up. But that doesn't follow through either. Yep. Ah, and as the two of you are swinging at these stony opponents, you find that their armor is just too thick. Hmm. Their turn. Dead, 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 and dead. He'll take the 10 from the ice. Here he is. And dead. The sand elemental. Go ahead and roll damage for the uh, air motherfucker. Sand Elemental just slurps forward. And it is going to spend its action grappling Sorok. Sorok, make me a uh, athletics check, please. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, indeed. Yeah. So it rolled your result. As it completely absorbs him. Sucking Sorok into itself and keeping him clasped there. As its sandy body storms around him, scouring at his body. He will take 11 damage. little guys come screeching out, ready to fight. His air elemental swirls over to the other side of Sorok. Or, not Sorok, Shinzo. Uh, Ryan, Ryan, go ahead and roll the 2d6 acid damage, because this, this, uh, this guy is not going to make that deck safe. As this guy swings down at Helica, ready to take her out, once and for all. And misses. And misses. No, that second one No, that hit. connect. Yeah, alright. Mm -hmm. That's... Six plus four, so that's gonna be seven damage to Helica. As he smashes her across the face. Earth Elemental, similarly, tries to swing at Helica, and actually manages to connect twice. Dealing a grand total of 11 more damage to her. Okay. And 
the air elementals start swinging at Sorok. But not Sorok, Shinzo. Fuck. God damn it. Anyway. One of them crits. Ouch. The normal air elemental manages to crit against Shinzo, which is going to deal a lot of damage. 19 damage to Shinzo as it smashes him in the face, sending him reeling backwards. He is down to 82. That's a lot of damage. He's down to 82 now. All right. And with that, that is actually their turn. All right. So, Sarok, at the end of your turn, you get to try and escape the grapple. Uh, what is you... the uh, saving uh, you said it. Oh, Sorry, what, go what ahead. Was, what was that mean? My curse also adds a disadvantage at one stat for the sand thing. So what what is the saving check for grappling? Is it uh, strength? It strength. Uh yeah, it'll be strength. So it actually has a disadvantage on strength. Alright. Ah. Uh, cool. Well, but enough for future reference. Uh you have to beat a Nat one to break out of it. I think you can roll above a ten. Uh, question. If I remember correctly, I can use acrobatics or athletics in sure. grapple. Correct. Yeah. You manage to pull yourself free, twisting out and rolling to safety away from the sand monster. Now, did that cost my action? Yes. Damn it. Yep. Alright. Wait, wait, wait. Did it cost my bonus? It was at the end of your turn. Shit. Yeah. Spider Man! Okay, so which one hit him very hard? Oh, okay. Well, he's gonna turn his attention to that one and just go freaking crazy on it. And ye and boy went spending, ham. Spending action soldier as well. Like I said, going wild on it. Oh, shit. Just called that last one. Alright, well, all of those are going to hit except the last one. Yeah, so, that last one didn't count anyways. Alright, so... Yeah. Let me check its HP here. Oh, jeez, Rick. 6, 12, 21, 26. Okay, that one's dead. Who would you target with the last three attacks? Uh, that'd be one, two, and then he'd receive the fourth one. This one would get the uh, the last sword of wounding hit, so that way he could get 3d4 damage on his door. Gotcha. Unless if he can make the save, which I don't know if I'm he's not even, trying to make the save. I'm not even trying to make the save, it, it just slows the okay. game down. Alright, so you just took all of them out with an action search, turning into a veritable maelstrom of blades and murder, destroying three elementals in a row and punching the last one with a sword. He'd look at them over there. Don't worry about this. I got this over here. I'll join y'all in a second. Alright, and Amo. Amo lowers the bow that he had aimed at that air elemental. Yeah, he's got this. <laughs> <laughs> and Biggles when he does his thing. And all of those will hit. 
as Bigglesby goes nuts, clawing, biting, stinging, and striking at the sand elemental. He tears parts of it away, tosses them aside. And at the end, the sand elemental looks only more slightly annoyed. Yeah, well, uh, that's that's all I got. All right. Icarath, it is your turn. Icarath would sort of look at the floor and see if there's any remaining sand and just pick it up and kind of squeeze it as he does a chill touch to the sand elemental. <laughs> All right. Which is probably not going to hit. That is not going to hit at all. All right. And Miss Chantel. Chantel is going to go in with another couple of Eldritch Blasts. As now the blood still reaches on, and you can see a clear sigil at the back. Right. And your plus d6 necrotic. As the blast smashes where the, the uh, sigil of the hex was created, the sand elemental roars and screeches in pain. Miss Helica, it is your turn. Uh, okay. Alright, let me go. That'll hit. As, uh, as Madame uh, V's, Madame uh, Madame V's fist, she straight up pulls a Chris from Resident Evil and punches the boulder. <laughs> Wiping at you. If one of its attacks actually manages to hit, holy shit, as the massive lash slams into Shinzo's chest, barely piercing through his armor to stab into his stomach, dealing 12 damage. However, the creature itself is not looking too happy right now, as its body is starting to come, come apart. Earth Elementals, realizing the problem here. Finally, the big guy seems to recognize, I don't need to be standing right here. And with its powerful, mighty strength, tries to push Helica out of the way. Hmm. So you'll need to make athletics to stop it or acrobatics to just hop out of its way. Okay. Oh, all athletics. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, nah, she gets ragdolled. However, both Helica and Madame V will get tax of opportunity against it. That'll hit. As the wave cutter slashes out, its swirling blue form cutting into the earth, Myrmidon. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, and the earth elemental just comes up here, trying desperately to keep itself together. And 
finally, the big dust, the big sand monster itself looms over the captain. And he watches in terror as its arm comes up, raising up and forming into a, like, tightening and forming into a crystalline halberd that swings down once, twice, thrice, four times. One hit, two hits, and a crit. Yeah. Shit, indeed. As the first two slice into your chest, the third one actually cuts deep into your shoulder. Dealing 40 damage total. I'm still alive. Oh, the heck, I'll be alive for long. And, good captain, it is your turn. He just has the look of, even if I die here, I'm taking you out with me, motherfucker. <laughs> Cause, uh, action surge. First off. So, I'm gonna attack twice now. Gotcha. Hit. Hit. So his first swing would be cutting off that halberd, essentially. And the next would be cutting into the main portion of his body. And then... Yes. Run over here. Disengage. Uh, no. I could just run over there. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Right. Because of the uh, wind. Can he? Can you? Is he allowed to hold his move action until after my turn? Well, actually, I can still move over here without getting provoking any attacks of opportunity. Because so long as he, I swung at that that one particular monster I was engaged with. They don't get can't attacks. A, yep. Oh yeah, you that's true. Go, you start your turn there, and yeah. you end your turn there. And my turn right over here. Yeah, that circle is a circle of damage oh. at beginning and end of a turn. There you go. That oh. works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to stay out of the circle of doom. All right. And Shinzo. I'm going to lift this guy. That is one, two, three hits. The first, second, and fourth. It's going to be, actually, I think, 13 plus 10, 20, 23. Yep. All right. You slice into this air, Myrmidon, some more. I'm starting to run out of steam for describing the combat here. Bigglesby. End it. Well, now I want to end it. But uh, I feel like this is the safer option. I'm going to Stunning Roar. So uh, we can all reposition without uh, any of these fuckos getting a chance to hurt us. So Bigglesby, welcome right over here to give Shinzo flanking to finish that guy. And... <laughs> Albo had to use his action for that, so that's my turn. All right, Icarath, your time has come. First, um, 
seeing the giant rock boy uh, running over this way. Just a little intimidating. So he's gonna take a couple steps back. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll go across the way over here. <laughs> Um, just want the hop. And the little back end to do. Right on. Right on. Both of those are going to hit. I think those actually might go on. Yep. Do you shatter his head with, the, with your finger guns, leaving nothing but rubble crumbling before Sean's hell. Which wish. just played out in my head, though, was he just saw him, got scaled, ran, and then threw the finger guns. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what That's what I mean. He's just like, that's what I meant to do. <laughs> Chantel, it's your turn. Chantel moves up right next to Helica. And she looks at Helica and says... What do you plan to do next, dear? Survive. <laughs> Hotel. Survive. Get the sand out of my ears and my boots. We don't have time to talk. Just do something. She she nods and smiles. And she begins to do almost like a horse dance. And then Eldritch blasts with each of her hands at the sand and at the earth elemental. All right. And as she like sort of bops her head, she's like, I shall be your pedestal for your next move. All right. Raise his eyebrow. All right. Both will hit, yeah. All right, and we will go to Helica. Helica, what is your next move? Helica picks this one up with one arm and starts to just try to stone by stone rip it apart. And then Madonna V is going to come up and then not attack. Well, no, she's not within it's range. It's flanking. Uh, yep. Really? Oh. Okay, well then yep. it gets it. And uh, Madonna V would also try to, like, rip the stones, heal the stones from this thing. As the two of you work together, cleaving stones off of the elemental, it just gets to looking angrier and angrier. But it's also looking weaker and weaker. Mm-hmm. I forgot to add the necrotic damage for the sand. So good. Come on, roll 20. Thank you. All right. The sand elemental rises up and lashes out two of its sandy tentacles, slamming into the other elementals, sucking them all up into itself. As it does, you can see parts of its body start to get bigger, absorbing and merging the earth and dust that used to make up its body. As it snarls and hisses and swirls at the party. Hmm. Captain? Time to finish it. Norok just takes a deep breath. Second wind, and then an immediate attack. So first things first, second wind. Regaining that much HP. All right, as you charge forward. And I'm gonna call inspiration. All right. For advantage. That'll hit. As you jump up, your blade slices into the beast. However, finally, you notice the fire is not hurting it at all. 
as it glares back up at you as you come down to towards it. Now then. Spider-Man? Uh, um, uh, I would recommend going over here somewhere like that. <laughs> yeah, he, he's going to charge over here um, second win as well. Why can't I just click on it? Because Will 20 hates us all, that's why. Yep. Okay, so... 1d10 plus 10. Yep. You take a deep breath. Allow yourself a moment to heal. And then, once again, turn into a murderous, swirling rampage of destruction. Yeah, hopefully. I hit every... One... All right, the first, third, and fourth hit. All right, so he's got two wounds. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. And... Amo! Bigglesby watches as they do this, takes a deep breath of his own, and lets it all out. cacophonous roar slams into the sound into the sand elemental its body shatters and scatters swirling into the walls as the roar rockets past it it quickly starts to reform but you all notice it's reforming very very soon take some quick Hot shots at it. <laughs> so that's gonna be 25. 29, Jesus. It is still kicking. Icarath. There's only one thing left to do. And that is PP. Accurate. Both of those will hit. Fourteen total. All right. And Miss Chantel. Chantel smiles, and her clothes begin to change once more into a more deserty robe. In fact, something helico would see as very familiar. Those attire of the glimmering elves in the diamond deserts. She bows to her and says, I have a plan, dear. Would you like to have a dance of death with this dear old me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, sure. Okay. Fine. Take my hand and do what you will. Let us both use Toll the Dead. And I will what use is... my inspiration as an advantage. All right. Oh my she goodness. She brings her up and begins to twirl along with Helica around this as bells begin to ring as they both do a dance amongst the sand. And it's an unusual, irregular footsteps. Okay. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Oh my goodness. Are you going to um, be, will you be joining her in this dance? Yeah, um, uh, as every step Helica takes, her footprints leave, um, like, black ichor, uh, that is, that spikes up in the sand and falls back and then spikes back up and then fall, um, using, 
uh, inflict wounds, um, you know, and the the sand becomes veiny and Rexian like. All right, hold on, and that's how a twin this this uh yeah. As the, that one. as the necrotic bells toll and the Phyrexian oil strikes up at the sand elemental, you can see the infection starting to spread through it, burning its soul. What soul it had. <laughs> the darkness starts to take its toll as the elemental falters and then slows down. And then finally, with a last shuddering shriek, collapses into itself, sizzling away into naught but dust. Hmm. Wow, I am as lifeless as a cadaver. Uh, that was uh, exhilarating. Indeed. I just yeah, thought, but... since you were so homesick. Well, you do too much. You're so extra. But that's why I love <laughs> you. Where is it? Did it drop any treasure? Usually these creatures drop something. Uh, no, it did not. No piece of eight? No. Aren't we at the top of the, the tower? You are indeed. Looks around. Oh no. There's gotta be something somewhere. Uh, uh, hmm. Hello, piece of eight. Are you in here? <laughs> hmm. Dark's gonna enter this room. Uh, where's that stupid. As Sorak I... enters that room, he walks up this to see a large like a large circular area and sitting on a bench in the center of it is Azura holding her holding their two pieces of eight together including the one that she that they got from right there And they look over at Sorok. Well, there we are. I guess. Zorak would move to sit down next to them, but seemingly, well, for Asura, it would be definitely obvious that he's been troubled a bit. More so than she would probably expect, or they would expect them to see yeah. him at, as. Yeah. As you sit down next to them, their image flickers. But they do look back to you. Looks like it's tied now. Doesn't have to be. You're right. It doesn't. I could find yeah. the next one before you. So you don't know. I'm aware. But what would they do to us after we get all eight? I, I'm aware. Do you really want to continue this? This cycle? Unlike you, Goldeneye, I don't have a choice in the matter. We always have a choice. 
Not all of us. Tell that to your uncle. I did. He chose. And every moment I looked at him, I had to fight off my grandfather's urges and screams and roars to kill him. You don't think I'm trying to do the same with my grandfather? Your grandfather at least believed in freedom. If he did, he wouldn't want me to kill you. No. He's got a damn good reason to want me dead. I don't and that see reason that is currently sitting in my head, wanting me to come back here and kill you. Already gone, huh? Oh, I've been gone for a while. It's easy to sneak past elementals. You left your crew behind. Yes, I did. Because I knew you would come in behind me and take care of them. Not wrong. But... It doesn't need to be like this. Doesn't it? No. The endless bloodshed, the... Mindless slaughter. The loss of life. Spare. Do we really want to be sitting here? Oh, Continuing? spare me the Paladin Act, please. Azura's illusion stands up. Not Paladin. No, it's that holier-than-thou attitude that I can't stand. You're treating me like some kind of monster, like I'm just here to murder and pillage. Well, I mean, you I am. Are not but the point is, I don't have a choice in the matter. You can claim all you want that people are free and capable of doing whatever they want, but the fact of the matter is that I am not! I don't get the freedom you have! I don't get the choices you get! I get stuck with a psychopath in my head screaming at me that I'm a failure! All because I won't do what he thinks I should do. I don't want to kill my crew. I'm a failure. I don't want to kill you. I'm a failure. I was born a woman. I'm a failure. I want to get all of the pieces. So I don't have to listen to him anymore. For just a bit of peace and quiet, I will sacrifice anyone, and I will kill anyone, just to shut him up. I didn't get the same choice you did, and I never will. So That's because we hold their symbols. We don't have a choice in the matter. Why? Is the symbol literally attached to you? Sewn into your skin? She... They pull out a knife and cut their palm and hold it up. A thin trickle of blood streams down. That's the fucking symbol, Sorok. That! Your blood? And yours. Because that's 
what makes us part of this stupid, stupid cycle. Because like it or not, you, unless you actually go to the afterlife or finish the ritual and get a chance to talk to your ancestor, you'll never be rid of him. Just like I'll never be rid of this loud, obnoxious fucking asshole! Shut up! So yeah. Spare I me. Spare me that sanctimonious there's always a choice crap. Because for you, sure, there might be. But for me, there never was. And there never will be. And out of a sense of some twisted fairness that I still have, I'm heading south. I'm heading to Frostbe and Volte. I suggest you catch up to me. And if you actually do manage to find me, I suggest you kill me at the earliest convenience. Because the next time we meet, I will make sure that your bones are being gnawed on by the siren. Well, you better expect me to see me at a later date. As he just gets up. Their illusion fizzles and fades into nothingness. He just takes a deep breath and just thinks for a moment. He just walks down the stairs and exit, exits the room. Hmm. Well, what is the captain's next move? Yes. We get those those wounded men out of here. After we gather whatever we can from here. Head back to the ship. And figure out our, the locals' problem. Hmm. I've heard a little bit. You're not going to go chase us to her them immediately. No really of any point. So long as I hold two, they can't really complete any rituals until, well, they get their hands on the last two. That eventually is going to have them coming for us, then. They made their choice. They may not hmm. believe that they did, but they did. So then, what is your entire role I mean, not your role, but where are you going to go from here? It doesn't seem like you're, what I would say, disenfranchised about this now. As an understatement, I don't know. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. We can't. <sighs> we've come so far. I know. But do I really just want to continue this bitter s circle, mm -hmm. this continuous 
mindless fighting. Well, uh, as uh, once, well, not once, but still a great captain once said, there's always a choice. You could enforce a, a role of peace. Well, enforce is quite a strict, well, not the word I would use, but you could usher in an era of peace through your example of being that, leading by your morals and worrying them, of course. Now, say you go after woe. What is that? Oh, goodness. That's a thing that we've seen earlier. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Ella could just, she, she was just smoking in a, like, what? <laughs> right, that, that was a... Uh... The, the snack we seen earlier. Wow. Oh. I was wondering when we would get to see you again. Indeed. I am here. Guessing you heard that entire conversation. I did. I... I really don't want to continue in this fight. Then don't. After knowing... It is as you have said many times in our conversations. It is my choice. It is your choice. But know what happens if you choose to end the fight. She gains victory over me. It is not Am victory even... over you that you should be concerned of. It is victory over all within the Sea King's domain. All peoples here are connected, whether they know it or not. whether they believe it or not. And should someone pull upon those connections just so, it could very well wreak devastation. So what are you suggesting? That I go around continuing to meet up with each of the islands, gain the support, and eventually form a fleet of my own just to fight off Azura? If that is your prerogative. But no, Sorok Goldeneye, that you have other paths. He there, just there looks are, confused. There are many ways to achieve victory in this skirmish. And there is one standing before you that you may not have considered yet. What's that? The quaddle tilts its head, or seems to raise its brows, and just stares at you. Hmm. Fuck. Out of character, I don't know! Captain, who is it that made these rituals? Originally? And this temple that we're standing in? Oh... Well... The the Yon Ti. Yon. And who do we have here that is, you know, deep within with the at least one of the gods of the Yon Ti? Igrath. Right. Mm-hmm. And we found some sort of quaddle mantle thing before. If it can take down Leviathan, then it can probably help us in other ways too. 
Mm. Perhaps. I do not hold the answers you seek here. But I am a being of wisdom. Part of wisdom is knowing where you can find answers. So I shall tell you this, Sorak Goldeneye. The island of Labyrinthi holds the wisdom and information you pursue. It can tell you how to break the ritual and the cycle. After we help these people here on this island, we'll go do that. It would be unwise to do so. To do what? To aid them. They have been ordered by your rival to sabotage your vessel. Who did we leave in charge of the ship? I don't think he means... You don't mean the village, do you? No. Out of character, he's referring oh. to the guys downstairs. Okay, so... Yeah, like, the actual people of the village, like, no, they're fine. If you choose to assist the, the inhabitants of this island... That is your calling. But know that the longer you delay, the less chance you will have at success. It's better to help others, even... It's better to help others, honestly. At least that way you have people that got your back. Mm. And I know... Dumb idea, bringing Azura's men onto our ship, but they are injured. At least, like, as far as I can tell. The we'll just take them on board, patch them up, and put them in the brig, just to, so that way they we know for certainty they cannot mess with us. You that... would be enough. You would aid those who would do you harm. I'm not... I'm not I... I don't have a grudge. There's no point in killing people that couldn't defend themselves. Or leaving them to die. I don't see a point in it. The Kawaddle... Yeah. The Kawaddle smiles. Spoken as a true paladin. It leans down its massive head and boops you on the forehead. You feel radiant light start to swell up within your body. Erupting from your hands and your eyes as golden light. The Kawadal has restored your paladin abilities. Nani? Out of character was Soraka Paladin? Yep. I had no clue this whole time. <laughs> oh. Wow. Yep. <clears throat> Thorak will look at his hands for a moment, opening and closing them for a moment, before turning to Ikarath. You were saying something? I, I wasn't saying anything. Uh, Albo was saying that I really... Bringing them on the ship is a bad idea. Helping them, sure. We'll, we'll make sure they survive. We'll get them to the village so they're safe, but... 
We don't need to take them on the ship to treat them. When I leave them on this island with a bunch of fire elves that are more than willing to torment their lives, are we really going <laughs> to just damn a bunch of people to whatever fate that the village has been suffering through? Them given the chance would do the same or worse to us. In fact, probably their plan is to break the engine so we go down into the ocean. Again, Even that's why you start... put them into the brig. Yeah, but who knows how resourceful they are? They could break out and cause tons of havoc. There's no telling how if there's any mages amongst them. Or powerful magics they might have. Remember that they were able to calm the entire sea for almost a whole day. I'll keep a close eye. <laughs> well, not a, not a full. Oh, Helica. Oh, huh? You don't need sleep, right? Same with your no. Same with your minion there, yeah. Exactly. I don't require sleep. But it's fun to pretend. <laughs> well, why don't you watch over them then? Make it clear mm. they make a move. I could have two of my sentries come here and watch over them the whole time. I'm psychically bonded to them, so whatever I, whatever they, whatever happens, I'll be able to fill it, no matter how far I am. But, exactly. Um... In fact, why don't we put them on the Varaxian ship? So that way the punishment is a justifiable punishment if they were to backstab <sighs> us. Oh. Well, now, uh, yes, I, I was thinking about that. But I guess, would it be wrong in this case? Like, for me to use that? I haven't been able to... Not... Not the not the transformation. No, I wasn't suggesting that. Oh. More oh. of it's more threatening to their lives if they try to do anything on your ship compared to mm -hmm. risking their lives on mine. Yours right. is a much more alien in comparison to mine, and thus mm -hmm. less likely mm -hmm. to be sabotaged. The ship is is um bio organic. I could feel everything within the ship. So whatever move or whisper, I will know, and I will relay it to you. Of course, I'll call exactly. the ship. Exactly. As as, uh, as Helica, Sorok, and some of the others head off to call the ship, help the guys out, and you know collect the treasure that they so rightfully earned in here. <laughs> The Kawadal watches as Icarath just kind of kind of looks up at him. You are one of our descendants. Here, so yes. But more than that. You hold one of our sacred objects. I do, yes. It's kind of just looking around. All right, out of character, which one did you have? The mantle, I believe. Okay. The cloak-looking thing. Gotcha, gotcha. If I recall. I have it written somewhere. Where is my Griffin saddlebag? Where is my book? Oh, there it is. I found my book! Woo! The 
the uh, fucking thing. The Look. Herald's mantle. Yeah, that's it. The Coatl leans down and like settles itself into a large series of coils and wings wrapped over itself. I will give you the next part of the Herald's regalia. As it lean, as it uh, pulls out its tail, holding a large staff. Wow. Really? Just like that? Indeed. Why? Because I believe in you. And I know that when the time comes, you will do the right thing. Yes, uh, of course. He the sort of reached his hand out to it. Yep. As you take hold of the staff, you feel a pulse of holy energy surging through you. And behind you, you can feel the dark entity hissing in your ears. Good. Good. Once you have all of them, it will be easy to purge them. Breath is just gonna try and pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> As he stares in the face of the coaddle. The coaddle's eyes tell you that it knows exactly what you just heard. Right. He's going to stare at the staff and then scare the coaddle again and just say, I'll, I'll do what's right. You will do what you choose. Nothing more, nothing less. I have faith that you will make the right decision, but that decision, as your captain has so adequately put it multiple times, is yours and yours alone to make. Yeah. Yeah, about that. What if I have no idea what the actual right decision is here. Like, let's say theoretically that was an option. The Kowaddle just smiles. The right decision not to put too fine a point on it, but generally Resisting demonic voices in your ears is a good idea. Whether you choose to do so or not is up to you. I thought you might say something like that. I'm a Celestial. And the Coatl's tail waggles a bit. We're known for being... faithful and cryptic. <laughs> and with that, it lifts up, wings beating once as it takes off through the mesh and into the sky. 
as the party collects their things, collects the treasure, uh, treasure is in the party goods and Rufa's part of the thing. Oh, nice. You head yeah. out to find that the sandstorm has completely dissipated. It is gone completely. As you wander with your new uh, crew, with your new uh, brig mates, off to the, off to your next big adventure, you hear a rumbling. And as the group turns back, they can see all of the ancient runes and golden trim of the golden tower fading. As the entire, as the entire tower ages a thousand years in an instant. And just as instantly collapses in on itself. Wow. That's a hell of a way to end the day. Hmm. Indeed. Let's see. Helica turns to take head count of the 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 uh these brigands. There's there are seven of them. Which one has the prettiest eyes? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's a big um, question. <laughs> collect them again, I see. <laughs> oh, that'd be Jurgen. Jurgen's got the pretty eyes. It's true, I do. You look at Jurgen's eyes, and his eyes are actually like uh, a glimmering green. Hmm. Noted. You'll have fun aboard ship Rexfia, and I'll assure that you're accommodated as long as you do not do anything to make me uh, get out of character. But anyway, yes, let us head back to the town and <clears throat> take care of what we need to take care of and get these people... Oh, also, Sorak. Are we not going to see those dwarves? Of course. Here. Right. That's why we're here. Why we're still here. We're helping okay. everyone on this island. Oh, that's what the the big winged monstrosities was talking about. <laughs> huh. I about mean, what? I'm one to speak myself. About helping everyone. On this place. It wouldn't be a good idea, he said. It said. Uh, it was... That was me getting confused at a character. Oh, everybody yeah, is confused. Yeah, it's, sorry. Okay. Mm. Bye, bad. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, so Hawkeye, how's... How, what, is, what, is the, what is the scene before the credits show? The scene before the credits is your group getting back to the vessel climbing back mm. on board getting everything set up getting your new heck, crewmates established in the brig of the phyrexian ship mm. and as the ship lifts off the final cut is to sorok himself the good captain The, uh, your, uh, as Bookworm, your friendly cobalt scribe, comes up behind him. So, where are we going off to, Captain? Did you get the piece of eight? Captain? Yeah? Where are we Sorry. going? Head back to the... Head back to the village. Aye. You heard him, bitches! <laughs> As the ship roars up, lifts off, and heads back to the human village, 
we will cut our episode there. The adventure having come to a close. So, yeah. ladies, gen oh. ladies, gentlemen, and others, thank you so much for watching tonight. If you're watching this on YouTube, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, ring the bell, uh, sacrifice to the god, a person to the Kowaddle gods, you know, the drill. Eat sand. Stop it. Get some help. Anyway, special shout out to all of the wonderful artists who have helped us. Uh, Gabriel Pickard for doing the map artwork. Yuikami on Roll20 for the amazing golem and uh, elemental artwork that you saw us fighting against tonight. Uh, special thanks to Ink Arnate, our map maker, which we use to make the map you're looking at right now. Super special thanks to Shun, to Shun and Bean for making the character artwork that you've seen throughout the game. Uh, thank you, Shinzo, for doing the editing for the YouTube version of this video. You are a wonderful editor, and I love you, and I want to give you a hug. May I? <laughs> hug me, brother! If you're watching this on the YouTube later on, and you want to support us, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Uh, just a little bit helps. You can also find us on Discord, link in the doobly-doo on the YouTube version. Uh, what else is there? Um, okay. I think that's about it. So, yeah. So, before I cut this off, I just have one final question. So, does Sorok now have sand in every orifice? Hey, what?